Hello everyone, welcome to this Flask caching tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can cache several of your resources within your Flask application. So that can be a whole endpoint, or it could be a specific resource such as a user. So without any further ado, let's jump into the code and I'll show you exactly how to do this. So we're here in our project and we're gonna to head to our terminal to install the dependencies we need. So I'm gonna open a new session here. And if you're using pip, you can do pip install. However, I'm using poetry. So I'm gonna say poetry add flask caching. And we also need redis because we're using that cache driver. So now that this is done, I'm gonna close this and we're gonna to head to our browser and we're gonna to head to redis.io because we wanna install Redis on our machine. If you've got it, don't worry about it. However, if you don't, click on get started. And here you have the instructions of installing it on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. I'm on Mac OS, so you can install that with brew. However, if you're on Linux, and Ubuntu or Debian, you can install it from your package manager. So if you're on Windows, you can install it with the Windows subsystem for Linux, and you can install it in a similar fashion to Linux users. So I've installed it on my machine. So here, if we go to the instructions, you can install it, like I said, with brew, and then you can run the server, or alternatively, you can start it using brew services start Redis. So let's just do that. So we can go here and we can say brew services start Redis. So it's already started, so we're good. So we can go to the Redis CLI and we're in Redis. And now we're gonna configure a couple of stuff. So I'm gonna to go to my extensions and I'm going to add the cache. So I'm gonna say cache, we're gonna import that. So I'm gonna say from flask caching, import cache. I'm gonna instantiate that. And then we're gonna to head to our configuration. And here we need to tell Flask caching that we're using the Redis cache. So we're gonna say cache type, and then we're gonna say Redis cache. And here you can add a couple of more commands such as the host of Redis, the, uh, the port, the password, the database, or if you prefer, you can add everything using the cache Redis URL syntax. However, because I'm on local, I don't need to configure anything because everything will work with the default values. Okay, so we're done here. And now we're gonna head to our application and we're gonna initialize our extension. So we're gonna say cache, we're gonna import that from our extensions. And we're gonna say init app and we're gonna pass our application instance. So we're gonna to head to our API resources and here we're gonna look at our user resources. So here I've got a row list and rows are uh, user rows. So for example, admin and other rows. So if we head to Postman and we try to fetch our rows, let's check if our server is running, let's start it. And let's retry this request and we get five rows. So this request is not cached. However, we want to cache this because this changes very rarely. So the way we can do that, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna say cache, we're gonna import our extension and then we're gonna say cached and here, the important part is the timeout. So we want to specify how long we want to cache this. 
Personally, I think we should cache this for as long as possible, uh, but let's say seven days. So this is specified in seconds. So we're gonna say 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 times seven. So this doesn't actually mean that much here. It's a bit confusing. So what we can do is we can come to here and we can create a Python file and say constants. And we can say one day and I'm gonna paste this. This is one, I'm gonna duplicate that. And here I'm gonna say one week and then that will be one day times seven okay so now that we've got this we can go and replace this with one week so that makes more sense so if we retry this endpoint we get the same results but if we go to our terminal here we are in our Redis CLI, so we can get all the keys. So we can say keys all, and here we've got flask cache view API rows. So that means that this endpoint is cached. So if I was to go here in my database and go to the rows, we've got all these rows, let's add another row. So I'm gonna say general, manager so we're going to save that and if we go and retry this request we don't get it so why is that well the reason is because we've cached this endpoint for seven days so the way you want to handle this is whenever you add a new row you want to clear the cache so here we can see from the Redis CLI that our cache key is flask cache view API rows. However, that's not easy to remember. So for that reason, you can specify a custom cache key. And the way you do that is by saying key prefix. And here we're gonna say user rows. So we're gonna open another terminal. We're gonna open a Flask shell. And from our extensions, we're gonna import our cache extension. So using this cache extension, we can fetch things from the cache as well as clear the cache. So I'm gonna say cache.clear to clear all the cache. So if we go here in the Redis CLI and we do keys all, it's empty. So now if we retry this request, we get the general manager as well. And if we look at the keys, we get flask cache user rows. So why did we change it? So how is that going to help us? So it's gonna help us because using the cache extension, we can fetch individual items from the cache using the key we specify. So in this case, we said user rows and we can fetch it. We can even check if, if something exists in the cache. So we've got another method called has. And see, we've got a key with user rows. But if we added something random, let's say users, we get false. Now that we have specified this key, we can also delete that entry from the cache. So we can say cache.delete, and here we can say user rows, and that's gone as well. So if we head here to our keys, they're all gone. And if we check in the cache, It doesn't have it. So what are other ways of using Flask caching? So we can head here to our 
resources and here we're fetching a specific user. And you might want to cache a specific user for some reason. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say user is equal to cache.get. And here we need to specify a key that we want to get the user. So let's just say user underscore ID and then let's pass the user ID here. So if we don't find the user in our cache using this key, then we're going to fetch them from the database and then save them to the cache. So we're going to say if user is none, we want to fetch the user and then we want to save them to the cache. So we're going to say cache.set and here we're going to pass again an F string and we're going to say user underscore ID underscore user ID. And here we're going to pass the user we fetch from our database. So we're going to head to Postman and we're going to fetch a specific user. So we've got this user called John Doe with age 25. So if we went to the database and found this user and changed their age to 33 and saved it, we still get 25. And that's because this user is cached. And if we head to our terminal and we go to the uh, ready CLI and we look at the keys here we've got flask cache user ID of one and we can do the same with the cache extension so we can say cache dot get user underscore ID underscore one and we get our user model so that is how you can use the Flask caching extension to save items in your cache if you want to have a better performance rather than hitting your database every single time. I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have, please like, comment and share the video as this helps the channel grow so I can keep making these videos. I upload new videos every week about Python and related frameworks so if you want to get notified when I do, please subscribe as well as click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a new video is released. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.